Today I'm going over the D-Rock and I'm going to set this up with my furnace battery backup and this is for a capacity test. Later on, what's coming up is I want to try a lithium titanate battery bank that I built myself. I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up. As you can see, the diagram is pretty straightforward. I just uh, need to splice it in to the negative side. There's a shunt that comes with this thing. And like I say, I'm going to splice this thing in to my battery backup setup. And what that'll let me do is accurately monitor exactly what power I'm actually pulling from the batteries before they're depleted to see if the lithium titanate is a good solution for me. I'm going to set this monitor up and we're going to see what kind of life we actually get or how much power we actually get from the two lead acid batteries that I have in my furnace battery backup. So I'm just going to go ahead now and uh, splice this cable and put the shunt in here and I'm just going to put the monitor up top here for now just as a temporary solution until I figure out what I want to do with this setup permanently. The current batteries in here right now are two generic lead acid battery set and I think they're rated at 105 amps. Once I do have this shunt installed I'm going to try this meter out right away and we'll get you guys a result of what that looks looks like. So wiring this thing up was actually pretty easy. I just followed the diagram on the back. So this wire goes down to the positive terminal right at the battery. The second wire, as you can see, is supposed to go to the negative of the battery and it does go down. Make sure you get the right one. There we go. You can see it goes down to the negative terminal of the battery. The uh, next wire goes to the shunt closest to the battery so that's this one here the second black wire and you can follow it there as well and then the last wire goes to the other side of the shunt so as you can see the wire was pretty straightforward i did make sure i tinned all these connections just to make sure that the wires don't corrode or don't get beat up now this is just a temporary spot for this thing because i do not want it just sitting up top like this but for the sake of the video this is where it's going to sit The device is pretty straightforward to operate. It's just push button that'll turn the display backlight on and off. And then to get into any of the settings menus, just push and hold the single button. Not the most intuitive, but I mean, these things are cheap. So if you're looking for monitoring any kind of battery voltage for like an RV or for your home, or for doing exactly what I'm doing here with playing with different battery packs, I think it's gonna be a great little solution. Now I forgot to do this part at the uh, start of the video. Before you use this thing for the first time, make sure you push and hold until you see uh, Kerr, and that'll let you set up the shunt. And in our case, it is a 100 amp shunt, so we are already good. So the default is just fine. We can see the batteries are charged up. They're only taking uh, maybe an amp between the two. So what we'll do to test this out to see what the actual watt hour capacity is, is I'll reset the monitor. Do that by pushing and holding until you get the CLR. There we go. I'm gonna clear that. So that's back at zero. So we'll kill the breaker and see how long it goes. There you can see the live consumption. The furnace is running right now. So we'll keep you posted on uh, what the total kilowatt hour capacity is. Well, as you can tell by the change in clothes, the test never finished up yesterday. And this is because it actually, the battery lasted too long and my kid needed to go to bed because he's got school today. I'll show you where I ended up yesterday and uh, we'll take a look and we'll actually finish this test up today. So yesterday we got up to a 1,008 watt hours of use. Before we get started, we'll reset the meter and we'll try this again. And I still did have quite a bit of life left in those batteries. So I'm going to kill the breaker again and we'll try this again for round two. I will also make sure that these are not using power because I kind of want to test my furnace back up at the same time as well. So the first time I ran the test, I wasn't even actually able to finish it. The battery life was longer than anticipated. So I ended up having to charge the batteries back up and start again the next day, but I did get a result. The battery pack lasted from 12.30 in the afternoon and it went till about nine o'clock in the evening. Temperatures outside were between minus 12 and minus 20 degrees Celsius. So the total number of watts we used was 1,516. There are two batteries in this array. They're wired up in parallel and they used a total of 63.17 amps per battery. Now I'm pretty pumped about that because uh, I was anticipating to get about 50 amps out of this battery. 
I ran the batteries down to 10.4 volts under load and I could probably pull a little bit more power out of them but I didn't want to damage anything. If you are looking to keep track or monitor any kind of usage on a battery or see what kind of battery life you have available, this D-Rock controller is a pretty cheap easy way to set up and monitor that battery usage. Now what I hope to do with this thing eventually is get some uh, LTO or lithium titanate battery set up in this array and uh, squeeze a little bit more life out of it. I'd like to be able to have at least a couple of days worth of battery backup power. I've never put together a lithium titanate cell so I'm uh, excited to get a hold of that and I do have the supplies for it actually. I have the BMS and I have the cells and now I just have to put that together. So there will be a video of that somewhere on my channel as well. If you're a little curious as to how I made this furnace battery backup work, I will leave a video link to that on the side and you can check that out. 